Hey everyone, welcome to week 63. Today is day five. Today is Friday, our last day on our What Should I Paint week. And today we're going to finish off this week by painting... See you next week, new theme, bye! Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is going to be day five. This is our last day on our What Should I Paint week. And again, let me take this opportunity to say that you guys were awesome. Your suggestions were amazing. We really do have enough just weird subject matter here to last us for another year of our painted lives if we wanted to. So maybe, maybe we can revisit uh, this challenge in the future. Or maybe we ask the question again and you guys can throw at us things that you think that would be ridiculous to paint and we will try to find our way. <laughs> I think that that's a super cool challenge. But anyways, this being the last day of the week, honestly, thank you guys, because you made this exercise super enjoyable with all your suggestions. So the suggestion for today is really nice. Um, I didn't know how to deal with it initially. One of you guys suggested three blind mice, which is a really old nursery rhyme. And I wasn't really sure how to go about doing this. I also noticed one thing. My history with three blind mice is very weird because what I remember from three blind mice is just this old Fisher Price little thing that you would wind up and it would just play the song. And I just remember the part where you go like three blind mice, three blind mice, but that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. I realized I actually don't know anything about the three blind mice. And then I thought, well, it must be like a blind leading the blind thing. And I remembered Bruegel's painting of the blind leading the blind. And I thought, well, this must be it. This should be at the core of this nursery rhyme. And like almost all nursery rhymes, no, it's actually a lot darker. It's so much darker than that. I thought it was ultimately about ignorance, about blindly following somebody else. But no, this is a nursery rhyme where a butcher's wife uh, cuts the tail of three mice. And when the story was fleshed out a little bit more, what blinds them is like a bramble bush. So this is horrid. This is a tragic story. These mice had to run away from the butcher's wife and they try to hide in a thorned bush. That blinds them and eventually she cuts off their tails. This is absolutely horrific. So when I read that, I was like, okay, this is, uh, this is too dark. This is a revenge story, if you really think about it. These blind, tailless mice are going to take revenge on the uh, butcher's wife. And that's a story. I mean, if you really wanted to illustrate that, that's an awesome story. The day the mice saw justice. You know, that, that would have been nice. But I realized, okay, for a single image, I can't construct it based on a ton of narrative that is barely going to be there. You know, it's almost like you have to know the backstory of everything that would be going on underneath for the image to ultimately make sense. And I wonder how many people actually knew that that was the nursery rhyme. Maybe I'm being super ignorant. Maybe I was one of the blind mice, but I just didn't know. I, I really didn't know it was just about cutting the tail of three mice. So what I started doing was basically what I did during the week, which was to start examining this visual encyclopedia that I have in my head and thinking, okay, when I say three blind mice, what sort of imagery pops up? First one was very easy because it's probably the closest one. I remember Shrek, the movie, <laughs> and I remember them being characters there. And I was like, okay, that's there. Then I started thinking about mice, and I was like, okay, which movies have had mice that have really struck a chord with me? And because we've been on this vintage trip lately, the first one has to be Mice vs. Rats. That only means one thing, Secret of Nim. You know, I was five or six when I saw this because this came out in 82, no five-year-old. We were talking about Coraline, but no five-year-old should ever, ever watch The Secret of Nim. That movie destroys you. It absolutely destroys you. I don't know what it was about late 70s, early 80s animation. I mean, come on. Kids were people. We're not ready for any of this. That scene where Mrs. Brisby, she's trying desperately to hold on to her house that is sinking under this mud. All her kids were there. 
This is crazy. Honestly, it's one of the toughest sequences in any animation movie that I've ever had to watch. People cried with Toy Story 3. Oh, come on. I challenge you to watch Secret of Nim. I don't care if you're 15 or if you're 60 right now. You watch that movie. If you don't cry, you're dead inside. You are dead because that's not right. That's not right. But this movie also gave us some of the most incredible animation, like traditional animation ever. I still remember Nicodemus. I still remember the owl. Oh my God, the owl in that movie. Whoa, that character was magical, magical. I thought that was perfect animation when I saw it back then. I remember seeing this movie a couple of years ago and it's still incredible. I mean, the drama is unmanageable. I was guarding myself when I was watching this movie again. I remember just saying, okay, just you got to protect yourself. You got to know this is just a movie. You know, these mice, they're not really alive. Still tough to watch. The movie holds up. The animation is absolutely incredible, incredible. So I remember that one and obviously, there's been other mice or rats in animation that are super famous. You know, if I had to concentrate on mice, it was that in The Rescuers. I remember loving The Rescuers also. But again, tough movies to watch. I mean, the first one where they kidnapped the little girl. Oh, God, Madame Medusa? Jesus Christ. Is there a better villain in Disney history? I mean, I guess people would say Cruella de Vil. And maybe, but not really. Madame Medusa, oh, her design, the voice acting, the animation, it is just so on point. It is so, so good, so perfect. That movie also, when I was a kid, ugh, gave me the chills. Again, these are terrible movies to watch when you're little. What were they trying to do to us back then? Anyways, but I remember, again, the animation of Bernard and Bianca was just incredible. You know, those movies, those old school animated movies are just oof, remarkable from a technical standpoint. Oh, my Lord. The draftsmanship, the ability to access like our human nature through very, very strong drawing. It's just paramount in, in most of these movies. So it's incredible. But anyways, if I looked back at mice, if I thought of mice, if I looked back at mice and I said, OK, Secret of Nim Rescuers, that's, that's pretty good. But I still kind of have to answer to this dark narrative that lies underneath this nursery rhyme. So because on Tuesday I had a fun time designing a character, at least baby steps in designing a character, I was like, okay, let's give this a try again with something anthropomorphic, of course. But I'm going to lean into the animation side. I'm not going to make it super stylized, but I want to tap into some of the whimsy that those characters uh, that I remember had in those movies. But instead of making it cute, because usually, usually the mice were always good. You know, usually the mice were always like the nice ones and the rats, they always get the bad rap. Rats are always terrible. Rats always have the potential to be darker, more cruel. And I was like, well, maybe I can make this mouse also have like a scoundrel side to it. And what I thought was that this mouse would be a sort of informant, you know, a double-crossing informant. They'll take the side that suits them best. They have absolutely no morals. You know, they are part of the underbelly of the beast. They are part of the uh, dark streets. They know the secrets. And they just sell them to the uh, biggest bidder. They don't care who it is. As long as you can pay for what you're uh, searching for, they will give you the information. And I was like, yeah, this is the character that I want to uh, portray. And I thought, instead of three mice, let's make one and let's use these thick glasses to suggest the blindness. But also, let's give that mouse three pairs of eyes. So six eyes in total. And I thought it could be really cool. I thought that if you could imagine this character that could potentially see more than all of us, or at least all of the other rodents in that universe, what if those six eyes, you know, that ability to gather information were completely pointless because, because they were perhaps not literally blind, but just blind to everything that goes on? I mean, they have the information, 
but they're also completely ignorant about what goes on. It's almost like they're always on the outside. So they're kind of scummy. They, they're not allowed to be in this inner circle of like the powerful rodents or the powerful characters in this universe. So I thought this would be like a really cool character to design. And of course, as soon as I started putting all the pieces together, because I wanted it to be anthropomorphic, I was like, okay, there's a ton of things that I haven't worked out. <laughs> it's funny because if you're trying to paint something and at the same time design it, oh, that road can be tough. That is actually very, very difficult. That's why there's so much drawing and sort of choreography of shapes done previously when trying to design a character because those things can actually age you a ton in, you know, the subsequent fleshing out of this character. But when you try to go all at once and attempt to give a sense of like the final version of this character in an Alla Prima painting exercise, uh, yeah, it's not easy. So I ran into a bunch of trouble mainly just trying to understand the sort of bigger shapes that I wanted this character to have. And of course, for me, it was important to concentrate on the portrait of this character because that's where all the mystery sort of comes in. It's like, why does it have three pairs of glasses? Like that doesn't quite make sense. Does that mean that there's like three pairs of eyes underneath there? So I wanted to have that in there. And I also knew that I wanted like a hunching body. You know, this is a shady character. This character has no scruples. Uh, again, a lot of those things would be easier to understand and contextualize if you were doing like a character sheet where you're kind of pushing the shapes of the character and the gestures of the character. I think that the glasses are complicated. I would have to try and understand them and solve them in a far, far simpler fashion. So if I were to take this character further, I would have had to explore how do I understand this character if I had to draw it with like 10 lines, you know, if I had to draw it in a very, very simple, simple manner, how does all this backstory fit into this simplified design? Those would have been very intelligent steps to take before I attempt to uh, paint this character. But like I said, this daily exercise that we do in attempting to solve these problems that we put in our way, they are awesome if you just throw yourself into this mess. And you realize that you have to claw your way out of the problem. You have to. You have to try, emphasis on try, to finish this painting, to culminate this exercise. It has to take you somewhere. There has to be decision making and there has to be intent. And you have to try to recognize where you're going in order to put yourself in a position where at the end you're like, okay, this is what came out. And I think this was one of those paintings where I had a very, very broad idea of what I wanted to make, but I didn't think a lot of things out initially, and potentially that can put me in a ton of trouble. So again, it was very, very fun because for me, it's amazing when I can look back and reminisce about movies that obviously had an enormous impact on who I am as an artist and apparently on who I am as a human being because they destroyed me, completely destroyed me. I mean, Secret of Nim, that's not right. Don't do that to kids. I mean, as a kid, you have to learn that not everything is just this perfect life and there is suffering in the world. Kids don't need to suffer. Kids are beautiful when they're happy. They're meant to be happy. It's almost like the universe said, if you were a kid, you're supposed to be happy and joyful and bias-free and prejudice-free. You know, it's amazing. One of the most beautiful things in the world is an honest, innocent kid. So I don't know what these studios were thinking putting these movies out. I mean, clearly, they were movies meant for adults, but, you know, they're animations. So adults obviously thought that they were for kids. My mother probably saw... Secret of Nim and said, oh, this is about beautiful mice. Yeah, my kids are going to love them. No, scarred for life. I mean, Miss Brisby, though, she's incredible. One of the toughest characters I've ever seen. She's amazing. And of course, you know, it's a nice movie. So everything is fine at the end. But I don't need to go through that emotional roller coaster ride. Like, I don't need that. I didn't need that as a kid. I don't even need it now. Just give me fluff. All I need is fluff now. I've been damaged enough. God bless you, Mrs. Brisby, but my kids are not watching your movie. I mean, they are 9 and 13, and if I can keep my plan going, my kids are going to be in their 70s, and they will have never watched Secret of Nim. And you know why? Because I'm a good parent. <laughs> That's going to be it for today. Next week, we're going to be here. New theme. 
And as we always say on Friday, Fer, Samu, Danny, and myself, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us every single day to be your company, even if it's for just a couple of minutes. And all we ask is that you grant us the opportunity to be your company again for next week. So thank you very much for your support. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.